And once again, it's time for a 13 o'clock movie retrospective. Yeah, and this one's Dagon. It's a good one. Actually, it's funny because, as I've, I think I've mentioned this before on the show, but I really like to choose movies that maybe are kind of under the radar a little bit. Yeah. They're still, you know, kind of undiscovered gems sort of thing. Yeah. And this really seems to fit the bill. The interesting thing about this, even though it was directed by Stuart Gordon, uh-huh. who obviously very famous for doing Reanimator and From Beyond. Right, um, classic ones, classic. Yeah, so this is one of his later films, but... I don't think I ever saw it back in the day. Now, we only happened to watch it. You had seen it, I think. Yeah, I saw it a long time ago. It kind of crept up on me. I was like, where'd this come from? And right. I was like, wait a minute, this is the same guy that did Reanimator yeah. and the same guy that did From Beyond? And I loved those movies when I was a kid. Yeah. And this one does not fail to deliver. This is an awesome flick. And it, and it is also a Lovecraftian movie. Yeah. If you're into Lovecraft horror, you'll recognize a lot of the stuff from this. But the budget is a lot better. And the acting is a lot better than the old classics, even though I love the old Reanimator and yeah. uh, From Beyond. They're they're cool, they're cool flicks, but this really takes it to another level. It really does, and and like I said, it's weird because me being into Stuart Gordon and me being into H.P. Lovecraft, I think it's unusual that I actually didn't see this when it came out. Yeah, kind of like crept up out of nowhere. It really did, and you know the thing is that uh, we actually saw it because it turned up on Tubi TV, yep, just so like can, our last review so of can Body Bags. It. You can watch it for free. So you can watch it for free. It's uh, it's still up there, Tubi TV, and. I guess it didn't get a theatrical release in the U.S., it should be said. It's actually a Spanish film, even yeah. though it was uh, directed by Stuart Gordon. Uh, you know, everyone else, pretty much everyone else which involved. Is, which is actually perfect for this yeah. story because it's it's set in a Spanish setting. Yeah. It's like a fishing village somewhere. I guess it's Spain. It is Spain, yeah. Or either it's a Spanish-controlled island. I'm not sure. It is yeah. Spain? Okay. Yeah. And that's where they filmed it. Right. So it did get a theatrical release in Spain. Uh, uh, did fairly well there. Yeah. But it didn't get a theatrical release anywhere else, I don't think. And especially not in the U.S. Uh, and it really wasn't. It was released on here. It just went direct to DVD right. like in 2002 or 2003. It's a good flick. Excellent writing. Excellent costumes. Good acting. Uh, the story is, is, is written very well. Yeah. And it's a good mixture of... Practical effects and early CG. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't say it was great CG by today's standards. Yeah, the CG is not stellar. No, but it's it serves. But yeah, it's, it's serviceable. but it's not that bad. And actually, right. there's not a lot of it used. So you don't really need it, really. So it's not really like super noticeable. Yeah. But the cool thing about this now, even though the movie is called Dagon, and H.P. Lovecraft did publish a short story in 1919 that was called Dagon, mm. uh, who was, you know, a sea god and things like that. Mm. This movie is actually not so much based on that short story. It's actually more based on his novella, which mm. uh, came out, which was written in 1931, called Shadow Over Innsmouth. Yeah. So this this movie is pretty much... A little more than half of the story mm-hmm. is Shadow Over In's Mouth. And there's like a little bit of Dagon in there. And mm-hmm. then there's some kind of other stuff that Stuart yeah. Gordon put in there himself. But it is a very, the whole atmosphere of it. And it should be noted too that even though Reanimator and From Beyond, I would class those as horror comedies. They're campy. They're kind yeah. of over the top. This one, not so much. This one doesn't have a lot of humor in it. But no. in a way, I think that serves the story better. It's very, the, the whole atmosphere of it is very. Um, Real dark. It's very dark. Dark and it's, wet. Yeah, it's and I think raining. it's really cool because, you yeah. know, if you've never read Shadow Over Innsmouth, it's basically yeah. about a guy who discovers like a village of kind of half fish people, mutants, that worship a sea god yeah. called Dagon, which is about what this movie is about. Yeah. And the whole thing, like I said, this is the this is the dampest movie I've ever seen. Like yeah. it's all it's always bluish gray and green. Everything is moldy and dripping. Half the time people are in about a half a foot of water or a foot yeah, of water. Yeah, you can just you feel yeah. clammy when yeah. you're watching it. And I think yeah. that's a really cool aspect of the movie yeah, it really and, kind of puts you in the middle of yeah, it. Yeah, and there's a lot of psychological horror along with some kind of like weird gore. It's almost on the level of maybe like House of a Thousand Corpses in certain areas. It is super gory. Yeah, and uh, it, in and parts. It, and it involves this religious cult that worships the deep ones. Yeah. You know, the, and the deep ones are rising, you know, along with Dagon. It's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. I like the flick. But yeah, I really, really like the way, and like I said, I'm really disappointed that I didn't see it back at the time, but it's like, you know, w- watching it just a few days ago when we watched it on Tubi.tv, I'm like, God, how did I miss this one? This is yeah. awesome. I want to get this one on Blu-ray. Yeah, you should. I want because this one on Blu-ray. 
it seems like from what I've read, most uh, horror sites yeah. that uh, have reviewed the movie have given it positive reviews. And it's like, you know, why doesn't this have more love? You know, it's, yeah. it's really good. It's Stuart It's Horn's a cult sleeper. Sakes. Yeah, it really is. Um, on kind of more mainstream sites, has about a 70%, you know, positive rating. Yeah, which I'm always so skeptical of. And the, stuff those. like that. But I... And, I, and this doesn't happen to me a lot. I don't see a lot of horror movies, either new ones or old ones that I miss, that I'm just like, man, I love this movie. But this one, uh, it really kind of hit the right notes with me. I just liked the whole atmosphere right. of it. I liked the weirdness of it. Well, I liked them... The characters like going to this uh, fishing village. It's called Imboca yeah. in the movie, but that's yeah. like the Spanish equivalent of Inn's Mouth. Yeah. And uh, them going there and just like all these weird people kind of shuffling around with, and they don't blink and they're all yeah. pale and they're all like Slowly weird Slowly kind of transforming into aquatic creatures. Yeah. And it's like all it's that awesome. kind of thing. And it's just, and there's really, I mean, the story is fairly simple i mean the yeah. you know the the characters the two main characters who are named paul and his girlfriend barbara mm. they're kind of like on vacation on this yacht they're kind of uh he seems like he's some kind of hot shot he just made a lot of money on the stock market and they're kind of vacationing off the co- off the coast of the spanish village there's a storm you know they have a problem and they have to go to this village to get some help for them and their two other friends that were still on the boat and then pretty much the whole middle part of the movie is Paul being sort of pursued by these weird people in this village and trying to get reunited with his girlfriend who he doesn't know, you know, where she's gone and uh, kind of running into this homeless guy who kind of tells him the whole story of the town yeah. and everything. Be careful. Don't spoil too much. No, I'm not going to. I'm right. just saying that's just the whole, yeah. that's just the loose. What, what really thing. struck me about this movie is you could tell that it was crafted with love that whoever made this movie and the people that worked on this movie really were really had a love for Lovecraftian horror. Yeah. It's pretty much done right. Well, like I said, and I they mean, suffered for this movie. I mean, they're, they're wet constantly. Imagine the, imagine the time. I was that, thinking that like when we and were it watching looks cold. it. Yeah. When yeah. we were watching it, I was like this movie, I'm like, it's awesome. But for yeah. the actors, it must've been a miserable experience. Yeah. And there's <laughs> and, and in this, they're just wet and cold the whole time. And in Boca, I mean, every building is run down and wet and moldy and yeah. rusty and everything, the paint's peeling. And it looks very traditional old Spanish, yeah. like old Spanish colonial looking stuff. It's really cool. Yeah, and, everything uh, is just like gross yeah, and even rotty. The, and even flat. the old cars, yeah. cars from other eras are in there. It's just a... The uh, the ambience is really good. Yeah, and it takes it uh, takes it to another level over Reanimator and uh, From Beyond. It's Even though I love those, yeah, it's a it's, it's at a, a different, different level. type of movie. Right. It's a different type of movie. Like I said, you know, it's not really a comedy. There's not much no. humor in it at all. The you know, tone is more Lovecraftian oh yeah. than the other ones. It definitely is. Yeah. And like we were saying before, it's mostly practical effects. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get to see there's one particular sequence near the end, should I say? No, it don't is, ruin okay, nothing. That is super, yeah. super gross. And yeah. it's like filmed in like loving detail. Yeah. And it's done with practical effects. Some of the CGI effects... Um, like I said, a little bit, but it was 2001. So, you know, they're good for the time. This, and this, actually a lot of the underwater shots, like his dreams about yeah. the mermaid and everything like that are really beautiful. Like it's, the way they're done is really it's nice. It's pretty frightening. This yeah, is, this is it one has that, a very creepy yeah. atmosphere. Everything about it is creepy. All the people in the village are creepy. It's a must-see for children. Don't really do that, you guys. Unless you have, unless you have, like you know, pretty cool. Yeah, if the kid's about ten, you know, and he's hardcore, you watch it. Yeah, because like I said, it it, it is pretty. Movies should scare the shit out of children. I loved being scared when I was a kid. I did too, actually, yeah. and I was like super into horror movies. I started, shit, I started bring watching that shit them. back. I, I think little, watch- I, th- I think kids might be immune to imagery nowadays. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, think it would be think, the same. Yeah, they'd be like, I, mean, ah, yeah, yeah, I started that. watching horror movies probably when yeah. I was about seven or eight years old, yeah. and they bothered me, but I liked them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I like I was, it was oh that was so scary, but I was just like, but that's awesome. That one, I kind of yeah. want to watch another one. But like you said, nowadays I think kids are so like yeah. jaded that they just be like, what if? Another thing that really stands out in this movie to me is the uh, the old guy who is the last human inhabitant of Boca. Yeah, the There's homeless some, drunk. Yeah, you can barely understand him. He's got a really thick Spanish accent. He but, passed away shortly after this movie was okay. made, yeah. 
Actually, he I think he really did look like he put a lot of liquor down. Yes, he did. He like, really did. He looked know, like his role. Yeah, he looked like that was the real that was the real deal. But um, too bad. But he did a great job in that role. Even yeah. though you can't understand everything he says, his ambience, the you know, his presence is very effective in this movie. I bought I bought that character. I'm like, and oh, another okay. thing I love about this movie is uh, the priestess. Usia. Yeah, yeah, pretty girl. She is a beautiful, pretty like, girl. Uh, like right. a supernaturally yeah. beautiful girl, just like a, kind of strange looking, but that it really just, goes with the role. Yeah, just goth in her DNA. And yeah. the outfit that she wears, then like the outfit she wears through there, yeah. I so want to cosplay that shit. Yeah, she she was very much kind of a Morticia Adams kind of character, really. That yeah, look, you know how Morticia was supposed to be Spanish too, you know. Yeah, true. I, th- I think they kind of like. Uh, Put a lot of Morticia in that. They character. did kind of, and like yeah. I said, she. I mean, uh, I I believe she's actually quite famous in Spain. She went on okay. to be a, like on a really famous uh, yeah. TV show and stuff like that. But um, this was really the only thing I think I've ever seen her in. Yeah, she's but, great. Yeah, she was really good in this. And uh, I wanted to mention something too because I was reading. I read The Shadow Over In's Mouth, and I read uh, Dagon a very long time ago. And something that I found interesting, and maybe it's just me, I was reading something that uh, actually Robert Price. Who has been on our show before uh, Mm -hmm. talking about Jesus mythology, but he's also a Lovecraft, H.P. Lovecraft expert. And he was saying that he thought that Dagon and the Shadow Over In's Mouth was actually inspired by a short story that I am very familiar with, which is called Fish Head by Urban S. Cobb. And I know that because it's in this book and I still have it. It's over there on the bookshelf somewhere. It was in this, if you guys remember, like I said, old people like me. (laughs) <laughs> these Alfred Hitchcock anthologies of old horror stories. And this one was from the mid sixties. I want to say my mm-hmm. grandfather gave it to me when I was little. It was called stories that scared even me. And it had that story in it called fish head. And it's actually about a guy. I think it's set on the Mississippi river mm-hmm. and it's kind of about this weird guy that's, uh, you know, he worked on a plantation or something like that, but like his mom was a fish or I can't even remember, but he yeah. was like a half fish person. Right. So the speculation is that Lovecraft may have read this story and sort of used that as a jumping off place. Now it's also said too that one, he he apparently really, really hated fish in general, yeah. which is why a lot of his monsters are sea based. Also, it's speculated that he wrote Shadow of Ren's Mouth, all of this stuff about like inbred fish mutant, you know, or hybrid fish mu- human people because of his hatred for uh, racial mixing. Heck yeah. <laughs> which, yeah, that okay. makes sense. Right. Because he was, uh, you know, quote unquote, disgusted by races reproducing uh, between each other. So There's actually kind of a lot of that stuff in, in uh, Lovecraft anyway. Lovecraft always yeah. talks about race a Yeah, lot. he was very, he was very into that. That so, was just a man of this time, you know. Yeah, so I have, um, so I have seen that that's probably where he got the idea of this One of the things, hybrid thing. Another thing that really got me about this movie though was how the, the last inhabitant of Boca, how he explains how the cult of Dagon came about. Yeah. Because he was old enough to remember yeah. as a child how the cult took over. Yeah. And he tells the story and they reenact the story. It's pretty cool. They yeah, show so you like how flashback, it happens. Right. right. Yeah, he explains how Dagon, the cult of Dagon, supplanted Christianity. Yeah. Catholicism and, specifically. Catholic, right. You know, Jesus didn't bring anything. Yeah. But it's like Dagon the, brought gold and right. fish from the sea. Yeah. And then they show how that shit You sounded like down. box Wow. <laughs> <laughs> from Logan's Run. <laughs> yeah. Fish <laughs> from the sea. <laughs> yeah, I was going to yeah. say, say it like box. Yeah. But yeah, that was uh, that was kind of a cool aspect of it too. Like I said, the whole, mostly the middle of the movie is pretty much one long chase sequence, but it is kind of intercut with these kind of flashbacks of the main character, Paul, finding out what happened in this village. Mm. And yeah, it is kind of funny the way they're like, well, hey... You know, we were all Catholics a long time ago, right. but then the village was going broke. You know, we weren't yeah. catching any fish and all that stuff. Jesus so didn't bring fish. Jesus didn't do shit. So, right, yeah. you know, so then somebody Dagon comes along fish. and Dagon said, here, Dagon here's all fish. the gold and here's all the, yeah. you know. And they show that. All yeah. you have to it's do is cool. become hybrid fish yeah. people. <laughs> so you can return to the sea. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it has a little bit of a twist ending, I guess. I'm not going to yeah. give that away, but I don't know if it's the same as the 
story as the end of the story shadow over Anne's mouth. Like I said, I think it might be a little different, but I could be wrong about that. I haven't read it for a long time. I actually have it in a book over there. I should have reread it before we did this. I think the name of that video game I played on the old Xbox was called shadow over Anne's mouth. It's pretty neat. That's what I keep telling me because you kept telling me that you had your old Xbox, that you had a yeah. video game. And if anybody out there knows, like, please put it in the comments. Yeah, because I don't remember the name of it. Because it's driving him crazy trying to remember what Man, it was. it was awesome. But yeah, he said it was a very similar vibe to this movie. So yeah. I said, well, maybe it was, like, based I think it over, might have been Shadow over Insmith. Over Insmith. Because, like I said, that that story is very similar to this movie, even yeah, though it's the not first, exactly it was the same. It was a first-person adventure yeah. thing. It wasn't a lot of fighting in it. And if you looked at a monster too long, you'd start flashing out and flickering out and getting weak. You couldn't look at anything too long. Yeah, because that's a Lovecraftian it's, monster. It'll yeah, drive you crazy if, if you, you look at it for too long. If you got too scared, it killed you if you looked at it too long. It's yeah. pretty neat. But I have an Xbox One now, and I was looking for a Lovecraft game to buy for that. Nothing. Just Tesla versus Lovecraft. That's it. Which, Which looks kind of game. cool, but it's just like an action game. I want a real Lovecraftian horror adventure game for, for Xbox One, you know. but the, the, We can't really exist. find one. Because, like, see, I'm fuck? not... I, you know, you have your Xbox One. You play a lot of video games on yeah. it. I'm not... I used to play video games a lot back in the day, and then I just kind of got out of it because I don't have a lot of time. But if I'm going to play a video game, I would rather play something like... I said, I want something like Fallout, because I love right. Fallout. But a Lovecraft, but a Lovecraft ver- version of Fallout, yeah, where you can just cool. kind of like dick around and yeah. you're kind of on your own timeline and you can go futz around over here yeah. and futz around over there and you have different missions and stuff. Yeah. So I think, I don't know if there is one because I'm not really, you know, no, I'm old so. and I'll keep up with it. They're working on something called Call of Cthulhu, but I don't know. I think it might just be for PC. I, I have It's not available for Xbox One, I think. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we've not looked yet. through all your, all your games. I wanted to so buy far. one. There's no more, there's nobody out there. Yeah, so if somebody out there is yeah. like making one, <laughs> like, yeah. Let us know because I would totally play that shit. Yeah. Because I, I, I think that would be – there's a lot of – you know, there's a lot of board games or yeah. card games because I think that there was one like that was called Call of Cthulhu or something like that. It was like a card game sort of like Magic the Gathering or something of that nature. Um, but I don't know if they ever made a video game version of it. But I would play the shit out of a video game version of like – based around like a Dagon cult where it yeah. was like set in a creepy old village that was all wet and everything like that. Yeah. That would be fucking rad. Yeah. I don't know why somebody doesn't make that. Yeah. But yeah. So this movie, like I said, it really seems to have flown under the radar. I had heard of it, but I had never seen it. And now I'm kind of mad that I didn't see it back when it came out. Doesn't get the love it should. Go because, go go and ch- go check it yeah, out. Yeah, because it's really really good, and I was yeah. like really surprised. I right. wasn't expecting it. I mean, it was Stuart Gordon, so I was expecting it to be decent. Yeah. But oh, it's better than decent. Yeah. When we watched it, I was like, wow, that was fantastic. Yeah. It was a really really good movie. Like I said, not funny. So don't go into it expecting another Reanimator because it's it's different. Right. But it, it, bring your children. <laughs> Let your children see this shit. Okay. Tell them Uncle Tom. Says okay. <laughs> as long as the kids are okay yeah. with you know body parts and skin being removed and things like that, you know. Yeah. Right? But yeah, and uh, also there might be titties. I think there's uh, is it, there's some nude scenes at the end, right, with the girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess so. Yeah. Is that a bad thing? No, I'm just saying. So I'm just saying that in, yeah. in the in the interest of full disclosure, if you yeah. want your kids to watch it, yeah. I wouldn't let your kids watch it unless I'd scare the shit out of my kids. Because. <laughs> I would too, actually. I, I would not have a problem. Makes your childhood it. better. Well, yeah, because like I said, you know, yeah. I, I started watching horror movies when Makes I was... Makes you grow up strong. When I was little and I turned yeah. out all right. Yeah. You know, they traumatized me when I was a kid, but I but I liked them And Friday the 13th would fuck me up forever, man. I was looking do, out the window. Do you know what scared me the Sleeping most for some Sleeping in bed looking reason? at the window at night. Yeah. Oh, shit. Do you know what scared the shit out of me for some reason? Yeah. I think I was nine. Yeah. My Bloody Valentine, of all things. Yeah, that one didn't bother me too much. It's weird. I don't know why. Like, I see it now, and I don't know why it bothered me. But yeah. you know what bothered me the most? That scene where they open the candy box, and there's, like, yeah. a human heart in there. I was like, yeah. why? Oh, no. Another, another, one, <laughs> another, one that bo- another one that kind of freaked me out was the prototype for Predator 1. It was called Without Warning. Oh, I remember that yeah, one. Yeah, that one tripped me out. A and lot of people say that that, one that, that was me out. one was that they remembered from their And childhood. then a lot of people don't realize that, you know, without warning was the inspiration for Predator. Yeah. It's a better executed without warning. Yeah, I think yeah. A lot, I've heard that mentioned as what I don't think I saw that back in the day, but for some reason There's probably it's probably not even on Blu-ray or DVD I don't without imagine warning. it is. It's it's not one that's yeah. super well. Nobody known. knows it. But yeah. I yeah, like Alien I said, hunting people, but it was hunting teenagers. Who the hell would hunt a teenager? Yeah, who the hell wants those? And that, so a bunch of soldiers rewrote that. Yeah. 
and made the, the script for Predator and, and slipped that through well, on, that on the somebody's Well, that was the thing, discs. though. Teenagers had to be yeah. the victims in right. all this because they were like, hey, we can show perky teenage some girl titties. A, some ex-infantry guys saw that movie and said, fuck that, aliens would haunt infantrymen. And then they rewrote well, the story. Well, if they were hunters, this is, that's hunters right. and they wanted a challenge, So sure. that's how that came it's about. It's like, why would you just go to a, go to a planet and like... Hunt teenagers. Want to kill kids that? or something like that. Yeah. It's like, they're useless. They can't yeah. fight back. Smoking pot. <laughs> Smoking pot and in yeah, bed. Yeah, like so you know. easy. Yeah, easy. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, if you want to see Dagon, if you have not seen it, like I said, very underrated. It is on Tubi.tv as of this recording at the end of April. So You're watching it for free, you so can go it's not watch like it anybody's free. making any money off you. Just get your cheap ass down there and watch that <laughs> shit for free. <laughs> and yeah. And let us know what you thought about it. Yeah. And that'll do it for this latest movie review of Stuart Gordon's 2001 Dagon. Remember, if you like the show, to like, share, subscribe, and share on all your social media. And if you'd like to financially support the show, you can go to our Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash 13 o'clock podcast. Or you can go to our blog, which is 13 o'clock podcast.wordpress.com. And there's a link in the sidebar to a PayPal account where you can give a one-time donation if you so desire. Also remember to check out our regular episodes, which come out every Tuesday, and our movie reviews, which come out every Friday. And until next time, bye.